Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, well, frankly, ladies and gentlemen, we have just had a big news dump of Pokemon Sword and Shield news. There was a new trailer. It's all been updated on the Pokemon website. So rather than sit and dig through it all yourself, why don't you settle in, grab yourselves a nice cold beverage, and I'll tell you all about it. Now, I don't know exactly where to start, but let's start with the free new Pokemon. There are a couple really exciting things, but I want to start with a free new Pokemon. Now, what is kind of weird is that in addition to the free brand new Pokemon, they officially revealed Yampa, but not Impidimp. We all saw him in the E3 demo weeks ago. Why the secrecy? I honestly don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I honestly don't know. But the good news is we do have three brand new Pokemon that we can have a little bit of a chat about. So starting off, we've got Alchemy, the cream Pokemon, a fairy type that is very, very small. 0.3 meters high, 0.5 kilograms. And the ability here is Sweet Veil. An ability that prevents both the Pokemon and its partners or its allies from falling asleep. Cool. That's quite nice, I suppose. And apparently it produces ice cream, which is really delicious. So pastry chefs want to have an alchemy as a partner. Okay, then. Sounds quite nice. We're also getting Roly Coley, the coal Pokemon, a rock type, 0.3 meters high, 12 kilos heavy, and the ability here is either Steam Engine or Heat Proof. Now, Steam Engine is actually a brand new ability introduced in Sword and Shield, which gives a speed stat boost if it is hit by a fire or water type move during a battle. And Heat Proof just halves the power of fire type moves. Hey, you probably could have guessed that one. And finally, we have been shown Duraludon, who might be my favourite of all the Pokemon we've shown so far. He looks awesome. He's the Alloy Pokemon, or she. It is a Steel Dragon type, 1.8 metres in height. Pretty much exactly the height of Wossy. Tiny bit shorter, but we'd make good bros. 40 kilos, that is significantly lighter than Wossy. And the ability is either Light Metal or Heavy Metal. Now, Light Metal actually halves the weight of the Pokemon. And can you all guess what Heavy Metal does? Yeah, it doubles the weight of a Pokemon. You probably could have seen that one coming. This one lives in caves and mountainous areas. Two different shaped arms to grind down rock surfaces for food. Shares habitat with Tyranitar and they're often seen battling. So I suppose at this stage you're going to need to put yourself in either Team Duraludon or Team Tyranitar. And ladies and gentlemen, I know it's early, but I'm going Team Duraludon. That sounds kind of cool to me. So, okay, we got three new Pokemon. That's kind of cool. But the other really big news here is Gigantamax. Now, we've already looked at Dynamaxing. We talked about that in a previous video. I will link my Sword and Shield videos in the comment section. No, in the description. Boom. Now, Dynamaxing is common to all the Pokemon. And essentially, anyone can Dynamax and it's lovely. But Gigantamaxing... Well, that is only for certain species of Pokemon. When they Gigantamax, they can use a unique move known as a G-Max move. And each G-Max move is particular to a specific species of Gigantamax Pokemon. These G-Max moves are only for Gigantamax Pokemon, not Dynamax. And it is one G-Max move essentially per species of Pokemon. Now, as it stands at the moment, there are three Pokemon that have been confirmed as being able to Gigantamax. Don't read too much into this. We will, of course, at some point, have a full list of all Pokemon that can Gigantamax. That seems like the kind of video I should be making. And I will. But so far, we've had it confirmed that there are going to be Gigantamax Dreadnought, Corviknight, and Algrimi. Now, Gigantamax Dreadnought here looks different. You can see the different design of the character. Clearly still the same Pokemon, but looks a little bit different. 
It is 24 metres high, which is frankly ridiculous. Now, it does retain the same typing and the same abilities as the pre-Gigantamax Dreadnought. But now you have a new move, G-Max Stone Surge. Water-type moves used by Gigantamax Dreadnought will change to G-Max Stone Surge. And it doesn't just deal damage. It shatters sharp rocks around the opponent and causes the Pokemon entering the battlefield to take damage. So basically it does a bunch of damage while introducing Stealth Rock as well. Well, that's kind of cool. We've also been shown Gigantamax Corviknight, which goes to 14 meters. Same typing, same abilities, and it gains G-Max Wind Rage. So if you use a flying type move, it changes to G-Max Wind Rage, it deals damage, but it also removes any effects of moves like Reflect, Light Screen, Spikes, and Electric Terrain that opponents may have. And then Gigantamax Alchemy, which just turns into a gigantic... Well, I would say cake, but it's kind of like an ice cream cake. Again, still fairy, still sweet veil. Now, this is 30 meters in height. I don't think I can eat a 30 meter cake. I'm just putting that out there. But it gains G Max Finale. Fairy type moves change to G Max Finale, which will heal all Pokemon on your side while dealing damage to an opponent. Think of these like Z moves, but they seem to go a little bit further in that they do lots of damage and have other effects. Although I know some Z moves do as well. It seems like a similar kind of thing to Z moves, if I'm honest with you, but maybe just knocked up another little notch. So the new Pokemon and Gigantamax really were the big headline stories coming out of today. But there are some other stories as well. They told us a little bit about the Pokemon League and how you need to strive to become the next champion. All very nice, all very lovely. But in order to participate, you need to collect all eight gym badges and you've got to be endorsed in order to join in. Good news is, at the beginning of the game, you will be endorsed by Champion Leon which will kick off your journey. Remember, Champion Leon is the older brother of your rival in the game, which will help. And you need to actually get sponsorship. I'm assuming these are all going to be fictional brands here. I'd love to be running around sponsored by KFC and Pepsi, but I don't think it's on the cards. And we've been given a lovely shot of Champion Leon with a cape full of sponsors. Pokemon and NASCAR are more similar than they have ever been before. Now, we were also shown a couple of what I like to call executives of the Pokemon League, a couple of new characters, so to speak. We've got Chairman Rose and Oleana. Now, they are on the Champion League committee, Chairman Rose is the president of the league, or the chairman of the league and president of a large business conglomerate, and he's made the Pokemon League world famous by implementing gym battles featuring Dynamax Pokemon. He also was the first person to endorse Leon, so you know, seems a bit weird that the manager of the committee is also endorsing the champion, but let's leave nepotism aside for the moment. Oleana is Rose's secretary and known for her calm and collected personality, and she is the vice president of the company and in charge of the day-to-day -day running. So there's some characters you'll be bumping into throughout the game. Now, one of the things that's kind of cool about Pokemon Sword and Shield is that there are going to be version-specific gym leaders. So if you go into Pokemon Sword, you will be sh facing down B, whereas if you go into Pokemon Shield, you'll be facing Alistair. Now, these are two new gym leaders which have been introduced today, in addition to Milo and Nessa, that were previously revealed to be in the game. If we start off having a little bit of a look at B... She is a fighting type gym leader who is very stoic and rarely shows her emotions. Whereas Alistair, I mean, you've probably guessed by now, a ghost type gym leader, always hides his face with a mask around other people, rarely makes public appearances, spends most of his time running around ruins or in cemeteries. C cool, I suppose. And of course, where we have new Pokemon games, we have... Well, version-exclusive Pokemon. That was the whole point initially. You had to catch them all and trade. 
If you get Pokemon Sword, you will be getting Dino and Jangmoo. And then obviously going up into their final evolutions of Como o and Hydreigon. And then, of course, in Pokemon Shield, you're going to be getting Larvitar and Gumi, which means if you want Tyranitar or Gudra, you'd probably best be going Pokemon Shield here. And a quick note about the Steel Book, where you get both versions of the games. I've made no secret of the fact that this will be my personal choice. If you get the double pack, you'll receive two codes with Dynamax Crystals, which will let you face Dynamax Larvitar and Dynamax Jangmoo in special Max Raid battles earlier than you would usually be able to. Except I've just told you that one of those is exclusive to each of the versions. Well, if you get this double pack, you can have both Tyranitar and Komoo using these codes nice and early. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's all the new news that we've got about Pokemon Sword and Shield. All of the lovely information that was shown to us. I remain more and more and more excited as this goes along. And do remember that I'm committed to Pokemon Sword and Shield. Any news that we get as we go through, I will be sharing with you lovely ladies and gentlemen. So if you're not yet subscribed, might I suggest you make that somewhat of a priority, if I may be so bold. And then, of course, I want to know what you think about all this news, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassy plays where we talk about well games that don't have pokemon in but we have a lot of fun anyway but by far the most important thing as always Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.